put the job in. Okay, so some of you aren't going to be able to uh, be with me for your acid rain experiment. So we're going to go through a couple of demonstrations here that you would have performed in the lab if you were here. So here are two test tubes that have just plain water. Um, we're going to add a drop of what's called brom thymol blue. So he's going to add it to the first test tube. We're just going to leave that. And we're going to give it a little swirl. Okay. So if you'll hold that for me. Okay. So with that brom thymol blue there, okay, it's a very, very pale blue color. It's not nearly as dark as it was in the bottle, but it is still blue. Okay, go ahead and put that to the side, please. Uh, and we're now going to try to change the water. And we're going to change our water sample by breathing through it, by exhaling it. Uh, and what we're gonna focus on is the carbon dioxide. So go ahead and put the straw down in. He's gonna breathe into the water for about 30 seconds, try not to make it spew all over himself. It'll take a little time. I'll tell you when it's about 30 seconds. That's only about 20, but it's probably long enough, so you can stop. Okay, so hopefully that has changed our water in some significant way by adding carbon dioxide. So. Uh, at this point, he's going to add a drop of the brown thymol blue. And give it a little swirl. Okay. And it's a little hard to catch here on video, but you should be able to see. Hold that for me again, please. That it is a very pale yellow. Will you hold them side by side so that we can see the difference? So, the first one was a very pale blue and the second one is a very pale yellow that yellow indicates that it has changed to an acid so the main thing I want you to learn out of that is that normal rain is a little bit acidic we don't call it acid rain but it's a little bit acidic because carbon dioxide in the air dissolves in that water given normal rain a pH of about five and a half we don't start calling it acid rain until the pH is below five so now we're now going to look at a second experiment uh, and we're going to use pollution to make our rain acidic. So if you'll put those two away, grab us a clean test tube and, uh, and add uh, a couple of drops of brown thymol blue. So again, we have our acid base indicator. He's going to kind of swirl that around in the test tube. We may end up with some drops at the top and the bottom. He's just going to try to coat the surface of the test tube with that brown thymol blue. And then we're going to have some other hands here getting prepared over here uh, to help us. Please put another one in there. Alright, so you'll notice the drops are blue. We also have some drops at each end of the test tube. We're going to add pollution, which is going to be more likely to get in near the open mouth of the test tube. So you're more likely to see the change, not on this end, because the pollution may not make it all the way to the top, but on this end. So we're going to look at that. So if one of y'all will put that in the test tube clamp. So it's okay if we lost the drop there, that's just fine. We want to focus on the drops that are near the mouth. And we're going to add some pollution with some matches. Okay, and the end of those matches I don't like help this. Them strike is just sulfur. You, huh? So yeah, just squeeze it and pull it. It'll, it'll strike. Ah. Takes a little practice sometimes. Wait, I don't have a good grip on it. No, this isn't. I'll hold the phone. Do that for a second. All right, and just kind of get where we can see the end. I know you may, it's terrible. It's dark, okay, and it's old, okay? You can just watch over here. So, so this is professional video here, by the way. High quality stuff. So, don't try this at home. And so you'll notice down here on the end, can you see that it turned to a very distinct yellow? You can go ahead and move that, Jacob. But the t at the top is still blue, but down here where the pollution went in, you can see that turned yellow, definitely making it acidic. So what that is simulating is it's simulating sulfur going into the air, which we have uh, when we burn coal. There's very small amounts of sulfur in coal, small but significant. 
uh, and they build up sulfur dioxide in the air, which can cause acid rain. <laughs> I can't get now, it. Now, y'all are just having a little bit too much fun, but try to get to where you can see that yellow. Okay. The last of our three experiments, <laughs> once we see that yellow, is rather simple, but we want to simulate the effects of <laughs> acid rain. So I'm actually just going to come over here and I'm going to get rid of my water sample here. And we're going to start with a little bit of chalk. Okay. So the chalk here represents uh, rocks and other things that may be affected from acid rain, granite, marble. And to simulate that, I'm going to use a very dilute sulfuric acid, which we're going to just kind of add to that. And we're just going to watch for a little bit. And the first thing you'll see almost immediately is some of that starts to dissolve. Okay. So some of that is starting to dissolve. You'll also see some other things that indicate a reaction is taking place in a minute. The second thing that we're going to look at that, with that is we're going to look at the effects on metal. We're going to use a little bit of zinc. And uh, I actually am going to have to, well, actually I'll just do it in this graduated cylinder because I don't have my other beaker with me. So we're just going to improvise, okay? But you can see the zinc down at the bottom. And we're going to add a little bit of acid to the graduated cylinder. And we're going to watch each of these for a minute. You will not see the zinc dissolve the way that you see with the chalk. But in a little bit of time, you should see that a reaction is taking place, which indicates that the zinc is being broken down. I can see, I don't know if it's catching it on the camera, but there's some bubbles starting to come from the zinc. Those bubbles are hydrogen gas. And what's happening is the hydrogen gas is replacing the zinc and the zinc is going into solution in the water over time this could break down like metal bars or guardrails or statues it's not something that happens immediately it's not like acid rain comes down and everything is destroyed but it makes things decay more rapidly than before now if you would see if you can catch some of the bubbles because there should also be some bubbles over on the chalk but they're not quite as distinct and then i will save my students any further embarrassment and shut off the video because i think you've seen what you need to see